Prinanda, good afternoon. Dioki Kigid Amamino Ani Hevu. Welcome to How to Adapt and Thrive How Small Businesses Can Embrace Technology and Digital Skills to Succeed in the Future. As BT Group's Wales Director and a member of Technology Connected, I'm delighted that this is the first of two sessions that BT will be hosting during the Emerging Technology Festival 2021. At the same time tomorrow, we'll be running a session called Digital Innovation Nation. And in that one, we'll look at how we can use 5G to leverage innovation for the benefit of Wales. Today, though, the focus is what technology can do for the SMEs that are vital to the economy here in Wales and play such a vital role in all our communities. There's no question that the country's small businesses have been hit harder than most by the pandemic with national and local lockdowns, social distancing measures, and reduced opening times, all severely impacting on their ability to trade. At the same time though, it's been really inspiring to see how determined, resilient, and nimble small businesses have been in facing up to the challenges that COVID-19 has brought to all of us, in using technology to change the nature of their business and to stay afloat. This session today will explore how small businesses can embrace technology and digital skills to thrive into the future. You'll hear today from Pete Oliver, Managing Director for SME at BT. Welcome, Pete. And Ed Goff, Chair of Digital Boost. You'll hear about how we've used our insight from our own customers to inform how we best support them to adapt and to thrive, and how this support has evolved during the pandemic. There'll be time too for our panel to answer that your questions. So please do add those in the chat facility that's available to all of you. First though, I'm delighted to introduce Endav Griffiths from Wavehill Social and Economic Research. Endav is going to talk about a piece of work that we published in the autumn last year to better understand how we can maximize the use of technology to improve our rural economy. Uh, thanks, Nick. Uh, good afternoon. I'm just going to share my screen with you now. Um, hopefully you can see that. I'll just start the presentation. Um, so uh, thanks very much again. Um, what I'm going to do is, is, is run through really the, the main conclusions or the recommendations, uh, which is in this report that we prepared for uh, BT last year. Uh, a couple of points really to, to note to begin with. Um, really, in, in terms of the purpose of what we were asked to do, you know, we, we've explored really the utilisation of digital infrastructure um, by businesses uh, and other organisations in rural Wales. Um, we're also examining the opportunities uh, as, as well as in the barriers that need to be overcome. Now, th there's a focus in the report on agriculture and tourism, um, but actually, you know, many of these findings are applicable much more broader than that uh, to any businesses and organisations. In terms of how we went about it, um, we, we looked at relevant literature, um, lots of consultation with stakeholders, uh, a number of case studies. I think you know, the, the, the main thing within the report are the case studies for businesses and, and other organizations who, who have faced these barriers and overcome these barriers. Um, there was a roundtable discussion uh, back in February last year. Um, and I think a key point to note really is, is that all this research for the report was undertaken pre-COVID. Um, which has obviously had an influence subsequently on, on businesses and their use of technology. I'll start with a headline, um, you know, finding really from the report, um, and really is that improved digital co connectivity really does have the potential to overcome a lot of the problems uh, that have faced rural areas um, and rural businesses and organisations operating in the rural areas. Uh, and that's in terms of economic development um, activities, but also in terms of the quality of life and well-being issues such as you know the classic access to key services but i think the key message perhaps coming out of the report uh, is, is that just having this mobile and fixed line infrastructure in place isn't enough um, more needs to be done to help um, realize those opportunities uh, there's no point in having a car if you like if you don't know how to drive uh, and i think that is the the main theme within the report i'm going to take you through the the recommendations i think the report is available from the BT website and, and I'm sure we'll distribute a link to the report afterwards. I'm going to go through these quite quickly, um, but I'll focus on the ones which I think are possibly most applicable to, to what's been discussed today. 
the first recommendation uh, is, is, is that really, you know, what, one of the key themes that we found was that businesses, organizations are time poor and they haven't got a lot of time. So, so we need to be careful really in terms of maximizing the benefit of the time that they can commit to looking at uh, their digital, how they exploit digital infrastructure and so on. Um, so, you know, the first step is really to make sure that the, the, the time that they have available is used as effectively as possible and is outcome orientated to support really as needed to make sure really that, you know, we're, we're looking at tackling issues and we've got a well-defined action plan and goal in place um, for the support that's being provided and the use of digital uh, infrastructure and connectivity within the business. Uh, second recommendation there is, is around really that support should be available to raise digital skill levels uh, in a range of different ways. Um, businesses operate in lots of different ways in, in different times of day, different activities, and, and people learn in very different ways. Um, so really it's, it's no one solution is, is appropriate to everybody. So we need to try and promote a range of different ways uh, in which we can provide advice and guidance. And that also means really promoting the support available via a range of different networks and not just tech related networks. Really the focus here should be on, on, on how to help businesses develop um, and, and grow. Um, and, and that means really not just pushing out these messages on the tech networks, but using all sorts of other routes to market, if you like. You'll be familiar with this. So this, there's quite a bit of discussion within the report on the adoption curve, the technology adoption curve. Um, and really the, the key message is within this theory is, is that, you know, we're obviously interested in the majority of people then. We want the majority of organizations, businesses and so on to, to utilize that technology. But what this theory is telling us is that the, that majority won't move until the early adopters have moved. They, they take their lead from the early adopters. Uh, and recommendation three then is, is built around that, you know, should we consider or we should consider targeting support at those early adopters of technology um, and really then try and help those early adopters to become um, case studies, you know, to, to become champions for technology within their sectors, within their areas, um, and, and that we promote the, the, the opportunities and how to come over, overcome these barriers via those early adopters um, to people within their sectors. Linked to that then is this need for what the stakeholders were telling us a lot, especially in that round, round table, um, session that we had was that they, they, they need case studies and they need those to be plain language case studies and so not, not not using too much tech jargon if you like um, and those plain language case studies should be focused on outcomes for businesses um, and what benefits utilizing this technology can bring rather than the technology itself recommendation five then is you know, just to underline the fact that we're not in a situation where no support is available. Superfast Business Wales, for example, provides a lot of support. There's also other support organizations um, active in rural areas. Um, so we're not talking about inventing something new here or introducing a new type of support. What we're talking about is utilizing those existing structures and potentially creating networks um, amongst those people who engage with businesses and other organizations in rural areas so that they can work together um, and, and share experiences and share resources. Uh, recommendation six then looks at uh, this divide between rural and urban areas, you know, that, that divide in terms of uh, the uptake of broadband technology and digital infrastructure technology is decreasing, but th th there is still a gap, um, it still exists. And on that basis, you know, th there is a need to consider rural specific interventions, rural specific support um, and, or, and or at least really rural proof the provision of support so that it takes into account the specific challenges um, and, and, and issues facing rural areas or, and in, in terms of rural businesses have in terms of accessing support as well. Recommend, recommendation seven, um, this really looks at the fa fact that, you know, we shouldn't look at this specifically just as a one-to-one -one, um, business support activity. Uh, one of the case studies that we've got within the report, which I'll talk about a little bit further in, in a couple of minutes, that is really about the fact that whole towns, whole communities and groups of businesses can work together to, to maximise the benefit that they get from uh, digital connectivity, digital infrastructure. So, you know, we should think about how do we bring groups of businesses together, how do we bring towns and communities together and provide support to those groups, not just on a one-to-one -one basis. Uh, I referred to the, the opportunities that this provides to overcome some of these general um, barriers and challenges that rural areas face. 
And again, so, so, so that includes businesses being able to base themselves in, in, in rural locations. Again, we've got case studies for high tech businesses working in rural areas. Actually, let's see if we can develop the sector, um, the high tech sector based in rural areas, not just use the sector to support businesses, um, but actually develop that sector in rural areas. Recommendation nine then, uh, again, looks at that this can be a, a substantial benefit in terms of uh, well-being, uh, access to services. Um, so again, we should be trying to support that side of things, not just looking at this as an economic opportunity. And then finally, we do draw upon research which Cardiff University have led on in terms of examining that gap between urban and rural. Uh, and I think it's really important that that kind of of research does continue so that we can um, really keep on understanding and tracking this development and this gap between urban and uh, rural businesses and organizations. Final few slides are just to promote the case studies that we've got within the report. Uh, so this is Rodri, Rodri Owen, who's the farm manager at Glenkivan Farm, which is part of Colleague Mir and Duivor, so the group Kendrick Menai. College uh, up in North Wales, specifically uh, uh, just outside Carnarvon, um, and 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 the the farm, uh, Glen Human Farm, is, is really leading the way in terms of trying to utilise some of this technology. Um, and and Rodri is a big advocate of of the technology um, and and helping farmers, future generation of farmers, but also existing farmers, really to make the best use of uh, Internet of Things and so on to to, to really transform the way in which farms are operating. Environment Systems is a company in, in Aberystwyth, uh, environmental and agricultural information consultancy, benefited substantially from a, a really good connection that they've got to their office in Aberystwyth. Um, but in, in, in that case study, Katie, one of the directors there is looking to the future and really highlighting the potential benefits to them as a company of 5G and the rollout of 5G in terms of you know, the speed at which they can collect and data information when they're out on farms or, or, or out in the field undertaking research and the substantial benefits that that potentially will bring to their businesses, to their business, I should say, as, as those opportunities uh, evolve. And then finally, uh, this is in the case study we've got from Cardigan in South Ceredigion, uh, where they've utilized, uh, there's a town Wi-Fi scheme, um, but they've also utilized iBeacon devices in shops and really are gathering a lot of information uh, about visitors to the town and uh, where, they, where they dwell around um, really the source of visitors and, and, and really collecting lots of information, which is then shared amongst the retail businesses in the town uh, so that they can really start to understand um, their, their customer base when they're visiting, where they're visiting from uh, and so on. Uh, that's my 10 minutes. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now uh, and I'm gonna pass on to Pete. Thank you. Thanks very much, Andorf. And you, the recommendations and challenges you outlined there really resonate um, with what we hear from our customers. But I thought it was really encouraging uh, at the end there to see the case studies of small businesses in Wales who are pioneering the use of those digital and smart technologies to boost their growth. And I think if you stand back from it right now, it's never been more important uh, for small businesses to take up digital and new technologies across a range of sectors, whether that's agriculture, tourism, hospitality, retail, and of course, all of the other sectors which have been very hard hit by the pandemic. Uh, it's our view that, that, that this digital adoption will be really critical uh, in helping those small businesses survive the COVID-19 crisis and indeed thrive beyond the pandemic and power the recovery. And as the report we commissioned um, that Endorf uh, went, went through some of the recommendations from, it, it's clear that connections on, their, connections on their own are not enough. We need to help small businesses uh, acquire the digital skills they need to really use that technology. And, and it's a, there's a broad range of, of challenges there. The skills that are needed today range from cybersecurity skills to help firms protect themselves from the growing risk of attacks to harnessing digital advertising to reach new and existing customers in a different way. And so raising awareness around digital skills has become even more important following the pandemic. And we see from our research that more than half of small firms are, are trying to move their businesses online, but they need help with that. They're telling us they need help. And that's why uh, last summer we launched BT's Small Business Support Scheme. 
And this is a comprehensive package of measures to help small businesses thrive during and beyond the pandemic by boosting their connectivity, cash flow, and crucially, their confidence, which is a big issue at the moment. It's been a top pandemic priority for us, alongside keeping the NHS and health workers, home workers, homeschoolers, and other key public services across Wales all connected with increased capacity, data, free upgrades, and even devices for those who need them the most. But let me just talk a bit about what we've done for small businesses and our focus on connectivity, cash flow, and confidence. And so to start with connectivity, the real building blocks of taking your business online, um, we've, we've really got behind this over the last uh, seven or eight months. So first of all, with many businesses shifting um, to online sales, we're seeing that high speed, reliable connectivity uh, is, is really more important than ever before. And so we've put in place four key measures um, to help small business owners. Uh, we launched uh, at the end of last year, a tech bursary, which provides six months free broadband, mobile and digital phone line bundles uh, for startups. We recognize that many businesses were starting just as the pandemic began. And in fact, many people have started new businesses um, to see themselves through the pandemic and find new careers. So we've launched our, our bursary scheme, giving six months free connectivity. And furthermore, as, as part of our small business support scheme, we've helped more than a thousand small business owners fund the cost of a high speed business line. So this is faster than normal, the normal broadband line. And we've subsidized those lines by almost three million pounds. We've also seen 25,000 small firms uh, put their services together with us into what we call our halo bundles. And this gives small businesses a really reliable fiber broadband connection, but also unlimited mobile and a digital phone line that lets you take calls um, from anywhere, whether you're uh, in your office, or in your place of work or out and about. Uh, and one last thing we've done on connectivity, and I think this is something we all recognize um, from the last year, is that we've had to look at payment solutions for small businesses. Many, many small businesses were still relying on cash. And obviously that's, that's become um, uh, less of an acceptable way to pay while we're all social distancing. So we put in place a partnership with Square to provide a mobile payment solution for our BT customers and in fact our EE customers as well. And that, that's to help small businesses take payments uh, both through in-person contactless payments, but also online and over the phone. We've been providing the first £1,000 of those um, contactless payments completely commission free. So it's a big package of measures around connectivity. Now, you would expect that from BT, but moving on to cash flow, um, we also saw that there's a very significant um, challenge that business owners are facing right now with their cash flow. And so we're helping to ease cash flow worries. And we're doing that by giving flexible payment options to our BT and EE customers. Uh, we've set up specialist teams who are speaking to customers who've got cash flow concerns. And it's been our objective to help businesses uh, through this difficult time. Uh, as a very large business, we also work with a lot of small businesses who are our suppliers. And we made a commitment last year to accelerate our own payment terms so that we're paying small business owners a lot faster. And we're now paying the vast majority of our small business suppliers um, in just 30 days with the, rem the remaining businesses being moved on to those terms in the coming weeks and months. And we have nearly 5,000 small businesses that supply us at BT. And then most important of all, confidence. Uh, we, we surveyed um, small business owners shortly after the pandemic began, and we could see that confidence was, was really, really a big issue. So much uncertainty at the moment that we found that more than half of the, 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 the companies we surveyed were really uncertain about the future of their business. And so uh, to help with confidence, we've really invested um, in digital skills. And we've got a big program within BT called BT Skills for Tomorrow. And this is provides free training online through webinars, online training courses, um, and, and access to experts. And we've delivered free digital skills training to over 20,000 small firms since we launched our small business support scheme last summer. And that's on top of the tens of thousands of programs we'd already been running ahead of the pandemic. Our ambition is to equip over 1 million small business owners and their employees with digital skills by 2025. And we feel we're well on our way to achieving that. We're doing this by launching new learning content on crucial topics, such as how to spot and prevent cyber attacks and how to use your social media to boost your sales. 
And in the last year alone, we've delivered more than 200 free webinars for small businesses with even more to come this year. We've also um, looked at mental health issues, and this is something we've thought about for our own colleagues at BT. And we've taken uh, the learnings that we have within our organization and, and produced a toolkit to help small business owners think about their own uh, mental health during the pandemic and also help their employees. We've made that all available online as well. So if you want to find out more about the, uh, the, the, the things that are available through our small business support scheme, you can check it out at bt.com forward slash small business support. And that's all one word. And all of those initiatives that I've mentioned are, are outlined there, including advice on how to take advantage of them. And, you know, this is making a real difference for real customers. I wanted to highlight a case study uh, from Wales, Zara, who um, uh, owns the Legends Cafe, uh, was in touch with us earlier this year and we helped her save a significant amount on her on her bill. So going back to that flexibility on cash flow, we took a very proactive approach to reviewing her services and, and reducing the cost of her BT services by, by almost half. And more importantly, as part of that conversation, we were able to help Zara with her with her phone system and we updated her to a new digital phone line. And that means that when she's not um, in her cafe, the calls can be diverted to her mobile phone really easily. And she's able to you know, still talk to her suppliers, still talk to customers and still keep her business running. I think this is a great example um, of a business in Wales that's been affected. Obviously, hospitality very, very um, severely affected by the, the lockdown. And we were very keen to, to help Zara with her business. Now, there's one more thing I wanted to talk about, and that's something that we, we launched this week. We're really excited to add to our range of um, digital skills uh, resources, a new mentoring scheme, which is focused on small businesses and is in partnership with Digital Boost which Edward will run through in a moment. We launched the mentoring program uh, yesterday and we're committed to help at least a thousand small businesses with a free one-to-one -one coaching session. Our ambition here is to scale very quickly and we're involving a large part of our workforce. So colleagues from across BT, from all levels, including myself and other people in our senior leadership team are volunteering to provide their time to mentor small business owners. And it's gonna be on a range of skills um, everything from taking your business online to digital marketing, cybersecurity. And so we're getting many, many colleagues in BT involved in that with Digital Boost. Uh, that's a taste of what we've been doing at BT and how we're trying to help our customers. I think it's, it's all about digital skills. We've got a lot more to come this year. There's more online resources uh, becoming available for free for small business owners. And we'll also be launching some tools to help with digital marketing. But with that, We'll continue to listen to the needs of small businesses, um, but I wanted to hand over to Edward, who's going to tell you more about Digital Boost and the mentoring program. So over to you, Edward. Thanks, Pete. I'll just uh, share my screen. Oh, I think Pete needs to stop sharing so I can. Ah, fantastic. OK. So um, hopefully you can um, see the slides. And I thought just listening to the uh, previous um, presentations, I was really struck by uh, Pete's comments around building confidence because um, we agree that that is the, one of the big inhibitors for getting people to embrace the digital future, as well as having the right levels of support, be that access to courses, training, mentoring, is actually being able to build that confidence for businesses to really embrace this new, this new future. So Digital Boost um, is, a, is a platform where we work with both government and businesses like BT to help small businesses and importantly charities to learn the digital skills that the, the organisations need to survive, um, particularly at this difficult time. And, and actually Digital Boost was founded with um, BCG uh, at the start of the pandemic where we saw this um, crisis emerging and we were approached by DCMS um, and the Department of Energy, Energy um, and Industrial Strategy to really tackle this problem. And um, BT uh, yesterday, as Pete says, joins, joins that program and other brands involved are people like Google, Visa, um, Apple, 
um, and Bloomberg, who are also part of the platform, both bringing small business to Digital Boost, as well as providing mentors themselves, as, as Pete touched on. And we all know why um, SMEs are so important to the UK economy. They are the vast majority of the um, businesses and organisations and drive the greatest amount of the um, economic value in the UK. But they're also the ones that have been most impacted by the um, pandemic and also unlike organizations like BT who can um, afford and invest in their people to grow their digital skills, SMEs very often don't have those sorts of budgets to really encourage and develop their people and so we need to tackle both of these problems. So what we do is we provide four um, four areas of support. The first um, is mentoring so businesses can come onto the platform, register on the platform, identify the sorts of um, issues they would like help with. So um, Pete touched on cybersecurity, um, developing social media strategies as examples, and the system will match you to a relevant mentor, and then you can have an hour uh, an hour's uh, mentoring call, and then you can have as many follow-ups as you like. It's a completely free pre free service. We then offer webinars and workshops. So we look at the system will tell us what are the hot topics people are interested in. And then we organize webinars and workshops for up to 50 people at a time so that they can um, hear from a particular expert, uh, spend time on Q&A um, as we're doing as we're doing today. We also have a very large resource library. So we have 47 different topics that have come from people like Pearson or Coursera. Um, and other um, content owners that allow you to support your learning by being able to research yourself into a particular topic. So you might have um, wanted to speak to a mentor about cybersecurity, you might attend a workshop on cybersecurity, but you can also go onto the platform and access content that will teach you about cybersecurity. And in fact, um, as you work through your learning journey, we issue certificates to people so that the skills they're acquiring are transferable as you move around different stages of your career. We also have community and insights that allows um, both the mentors um, and the uh, partners such as BT and also the SMEs themselves to really see what sort of support and help they have had from the mentoring. Is it making a difference to how skilled my people are? Am I improving my revenues? And we are um, very close to um, having a deal with the HMRC that will allow us to demonstrate um, to customers um, how their revenues have fluctuated throughout the period since pre and post joining Digital Boost. So we're very excited about that. Um, we have a, a, a large ambition. Pete's talked about a, a million. We're certainly um, thinking like that. You know, we're looking to help a million people by January 2022. We see this as a crisis that needs addressing now. But we also want to make sure that we focus on um, female-led organisations and also BAME-led organisations, which, um, for reasons that we don't understand, when we look at the performance of businesses in the UK have been impacted more than um, other segments in the in the economy to date. So Pete said that <clears throat> as touched on and um, with BT we're looking to um, deliver uh, mentoring to a thousand small businesses um, as part of BT's uh, overall scheme and um, to help this key segment and what we see from businesses that we've helped to date, we see very, very high NPS scores. One in terms of the content that is relevant for the um, for the business. So we 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 ask the business to give an NPS score for the content and the mentoring they've received, and we also ask um, for an NPS score from the mentor themselves to say, did the platform perform? Were you matched correctly? Did you feel you were able to? Um, did you able to help? And what we've seen is that we've had scores in the uh, low 90s from all SMEs who have engaged with the platform. And we've seen very, very high scores on the mentoring as well. So we're very confident in the matching algorithms that, that you'll see in the platform. And in fact, the founders of um, Digital Boost were also involved in um, uh, being founders in, in LinkedIn as well. So we've got a great heritage in um, using the technology. Um, 
as a as a SME or as a charity, you go through a, um, a learning journey when you sign up to the platform, as I've talked about, you'll have mentoring, you'll get matched, you'll be invited to workshops, you'll um, engage with the content. And over time, as you build up more and more experience, we see people getting more and more com uh, confident in the um, education that they've received and ultimately um, um, getting a qualification from Digital Boost that allows them to be transferable as they move around um, should they leave, leave the existing business. And that's it. So uh, thank you very much indeed for inviting us to um, speak today. We're very excited about the partnership with um, BT. Um, and with that, I'll hand back to, um, to Nick. Thanks very much, Ed. Thanks for your contribution and also to uh, Pete and Endarv earlier. Now, I'm really pleased to see that all the opportunities are being created for SMEs, not just to adapt, in, but also in many cases to reimagine themselves as a result of the pandemic. And I think it feels to me like we are also responding to a need that we were starting to identify before the pandemic, um, including in the small smart rural report that Endarf described to us. Now, as I've been talking, there's been a couple of questions that have come in. So just a reminder to everyone that um, if you want to ask your question, we're going to probably sort of take another 10 minutes. So if you've got a burning question that you would like to put to our panel today, do please make sure that you enter that um, right away because um, I've got a couple of questions and um, once we've got through those probably we'll wrap up unless we hear from any more of you. So um, yes, yeah, so the first question that's come in is, um, and it was mentioned earlier um, in the Aberystwyth case study from Environment Systems NDAV, but um, Pete and Ed, I'm really interested to know, you know what you're seeing from SMEs around 5G and whether they're starting to take advantage of the opportunities from 5G, or you know, is it just too early yet? So I'll put that on to Pete and then to Ed. Yeah, and it, Nick, it's a great question. So um, uh, for context, E is part of BT. So we were the, what, the first network uh, in the UK to have 5G last year. And um, what have we seen so far? A couple of things. First of all, uh, 5G is a great solution for fast connectivity where maybe the, the fixed line infrastructure hasn't caught up yet. So for certain SMEs uh, in certain locations, this is a great way to get connected if, you're, if, you, if you don't have a fiber line. And, and that's a very immediate use case that we're seeing from small, some small business owners. But I would say that it, it is gonna change the way that businesses work um, more generally because 5G brings much faster speeds, much lower latency, and um, we're seeing customers adopted in great numbers initially on mobile phones, but we, we envisage to being a lot more connected laptops, connected tablets on 5G, so that when businesses are out and about, and at the moment, most of us are not out and about, but in the normal course of, 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 of work, people would be, that they're able to have those really fast connections um, to applications for their businesses, um, like they would if they were in the office. Uh, and we think that's going to really help help businesses with, with with their productivity. The last thing to say is I think there will be a lot more innovation to come. And I think some sm some of the small businesses um, across Wales and, and the rest of the UK will be a part of that as, as the technology matures and more applications become available. But um, it's the beginning of the journey, but, but I think a very, very exciting technology. And, you know, we, we are rolling out in the UK and in Wales um, at great pace at the moment. That's really interesting, Peter. I just want to pick you up on one aspect of what you've just said there. So, you know, everyone's talking about 5G, but what, what are the other technologies that you think can, you know, really make a difference to SMEs? Is there anything in particular that you, you've got in mind there? Well, I'd say two things. From, from, a, from a connectivity point of view, um, we're also rolling out fibre to the premise as well, which is a much faster, much much more reliable connection to business premises, and and that's rolling out across uh, key locations across Wales at the moment. But I think, as Endarf's report said, it's not all about the connectivity. The next step for small business owners is 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 to really uh, understand what they can do with that connectivity. And uh, what's been amazing to see is how so many businesses have changed the way they work in the last twelve months. They've moved themselves online. They've got themselves an online payment solution. They've taken the first steps in digital marketing to, to bring customers in in a non-physical way. And, and, and that really, the, the, those technologies, those marketing technologies, those, those abilities to trade online 
are, are equally as important as, um, as as connectivity. And we're seeing more and more organisations providing simple tools to help to help businesses do that. And, and that's a big focus of our skills programme is to is to raise awareness of how easy that is nowadays. Thanks very much, Pete. I want to put that uh, question about 5G to Ed as well. But you know, please, if you think there are other technologies, Ed, that you think um, are just as important, then feel free to mention those as well. What what are the what are the SMEs that are coming to Digital Boost telling you about well, think, um, what they're excited about? Yeah, I think Pete's um, Pete's um, touched on some great points. I think people at the end of the day want um, a super fast, reliable connection. And that's either fiber or 5G, depending on where they are in the country and what suits them. So we see people um, wanting to be more mobile with that super fast connectivity, in which case um, BT and EE's rollout of the 5G network is critical. But we also now hear people talking a lot about the reliability of their connections, both at home and in the office. You know, I was reminded the other day when we had a SME who was working from home on his own business. He had three kids all learning um, remote classes and his wife is a teacher and so she was broadcasting out. So they had five people all using video, developing their education and their and their businesses. And so the, the solution for reliable, super fast connection is, is, is very important. And whether that's um, fiber to the premise or, or 5G in some ways is, is blurred as to what the solution is. It's more important that we get it. In, in terms of 5G technologies, when I look around um, the world at 5G, and I was very fortunate enough to be to be actually working for Pete on the launch of um, 5G uh, at, at EE, I, th I think we see the use cases um, uh, really starting to develop in the space of um, AI and AR. And we, so where super fast broadband is required, the use of augmented reality and um, artificial intelligence is really changing the way businesses think about their customers and service is um, really changing the way that, um, uh, that businesses think about how they're supporting their customers. Um, there are lots of fantastic examples in um, broadcast technology um, changing as well. You know, B BT has done some incredible work in terms of um, transforming the way it brings its BT Sport um, experience to, to, to the screen and to its customers um, out and about. But as Pete says, I, I, I think the exciting um, part of all of this is still to come. You know, we are at the beginning of the journey um, and therefore I think um, uh, we'll, we've, we've got more to come, albeit I think we have seen a very fast acceleration of that adoption of, uh, of this requirement over the last 12 months, people wanting payment systems, et cetera, which has obviously been facilitated by COVID. So, so um, lo lots more to come, but I think the demand for super fast, reliable connect connectivity has never been um, more uh, top of mind for people. Thanks very much, both. Um, the uh, other question that's come in, and I'm going to put this one to um, all three of you today, um, because it's relevant to uh, some of the findings that came out of the um, Smart Raw report as well, is um, somebody's uh, commented that um, it's really good to hear about the all the online training and the fact that there's so many resources available for people at this time when, you know, to be frank, there's not much else that people can be doing. But at the end of the day, online isn't for everyone. And, you know, some of these businesses that we want to try and, um, you know, get up to date and get up to speed with technology, some of them, you know, online really doesn't work for them. And they would prefer face to face kind of support and, you know, the kind of traditional ways that, you know, people are used to learning. So um, question that's come in is what role do you see in the future um, for face to face and, you know, where might that fit in? you know, alongside the fact that, you know, more and more of us have now got used to learning in very different ways over the past year. So, um, um, Pete, do you want to take that one first? Well, I think it's certainly got a role, Nick, and I think we're all looking forward to the time where we can spend more time face to face with with each other. But, um, yeah, I think you're right. For, for certain um, business owners, they're going to prefer to spend time face to face. I think it has to have a very local feel to it. Something we were certainly looking at before the pandemic was how we use our retail store footprint um, to create you know, local hubs or communities for people to come and get help. Having said that, uh, what we have all learned in this pandemic is how much you can get done through video. 
and you know i never thought i'd see my mum playing bingo with her grandchildren <laughs> through through a zoom call right on a saturday night but we've all had to adapt during the pandemic so uh, what i would say is that, that that i think right now it's so crucial for small business owners um, to engage in this stuff that maybe if if digital hasn't worked for you in the past actually the the, the digital boost approach of speaking with a mentor speaking with a real person not just doing a piece of online learning that can be very close to a face-to-face -face experience and, and, and i think can be of great value while we're all living in these restrictions ed would you like to just say a little bit more about i, that I completely, what completely agree with p i think what, what, what we've seen is that um, for a what I would call quite a transactional piece of mentoring, the platform works really, really well. So people like video, they can connect, they can talk about a problem, they can ask for some sort of advice, and that works, that works brilliantly. Um, given where we are today. I, I don't think we can um underestimate, as uh, uh, as Pete says, you know, this sort of face-to-face human connection of not talking on video is really really important because you have a less transactional type conversation and sometimes you just want to talk about you know how you're feeling and the journey that you're going on and some of the struggles you might face personally and i think that sort of mentoring is very very important and i think you know when we come out of the current um situation i think that um systems like uh, platforms like digital boost like the work that um bt is doing more more generally you know the role of face-to-face -face mentoring has to start up again and i think we'll, we'll sit nicely alongside um everything that we've talked about today so I, I think it's critical um as as running in parallel to to everything we've spoken about today and um, end off um just thinking about you know what's happened since the smart rural report was published really um you know i'm, I'm really struck by that recommendation around you know trying to sort of start things at a community level and you know uh, early adopters sharing their experiences you know in their place and helping other people who you know might be a little bit skeptical or reluctant to you know bring them on board as well so um i've really been interested to see the emergence of the smart town movement um you know up in um, north wales we're seeing some really interesting things you know, happening around uh, Poth Madog, Patheli and uh, Bethesda as well and a you know, similar kind of movement in Carmarthenshire as well and then you know in the South Wales Valleys we've got the Near Me Now app which is starting to think about how we regenerate the high street in some of our valleys towns by bringing people together so um, what, what, where do you think we're heading with this in Wales and do you think that there's what, what for you, you know, from, you know, all the things that we found out from talking to um, businesses and uh, you know, representative groups for your report, what, where, where's this going in terms of um, communities coming together to adopt emerging technology? I think, you know, the emergence of technology is, is just brings so many opportunities um, to, to overcome some of the, you know, things and, and challenges that rural areas have, have been facing and rural businesses have been facing um, for, for a long, long time. You know, going back to the previous point about, you know, how important face-to-face -face, um, training and, and learning is, I, I think that's right. I think what we've found in the report is, is that people learn in different ways and, and people do still want the face-to-face. -face. Now, having said that, I think the emergence of you know, more online activities during um, lockdown periods has, has actually improved some services for people in rural areas. You know, the transport is, is quite challenging sometimes and it can be quite expensive in, in terms of time and, and financially to get to meetings or to get to, you know, the nearest hub, if you like. And this is one of the issues around rural proofing. You know, it, it is more difficult to get around. It is more difficult to collect groups of people to take part in training and events in rural areas so what we need is, is really this mixed um mixed approach whereby you can do things online and you can do things face to face as, as well and and and, and that they play off each other um i, th I think the, the emergence of the um, digital towns and that kind of thing as you say in digital villages is, is, is really interesting and really exciting i think you know we, we've seen people very much becoming interested in it um, and using that kind of data where it's available to track the impact of lockdowns in terms of number of people visiting towns and villages, number of people not, and, and really trying to blend this data, which is now available and, and increasingly easy to access with their own experience of what they see happening in their villages. Um, and I think it, it, it's that mixed evidence-based, if you like, 
um, and the ability to utilize this technology and, and inform discussions, ideas about where to take communities, how to you know, rebuild communities after um, COVID-19. You know, there's, there's a really good opportunity Communicate, communicating, sharing experiences has never been easier. And I think people have, have never been as aware um, now as, as to how easy it is. So that brings with it so many opportunities. And I think the challenge is to not lose some of that progress you know, as, as we come out of lockdown is to actually you know, try and sustain some of, the, you know, some of the increased use in digital opportunities that we've seen um, as we move into the recovery phase. Thanks very much, Andav. Um, I'm going to be wrapping up the uh, session very shortly now, but before I do, um, I'd just like to ask Pete and Ed um, to remind us of the key places that anyone should go to if they want to find out more about some of the support that we've outlined today. And, and also, you know, if you've got any sort of final thought that you'd like to share with us before we, before we close today. So, um, yeah, so um, Ed, would you like to go first? Sure. So the, um, for more information, um, either via um, the BT website or via Digital Boost. So you can just Google search Digital Boost and you'll come up with um, Digital Boost, all one word, uh, .gov. I think it's .gov.uk. I should know that. I think it is. Um, but certainly Google searches. Um, and I, I, I would encourage people to um, get involved. It's a, it's a, it's a, a fantastic opportunity. Um, there's lots of um, fantastic things to um, learn. And I think that the mentoring program we've seen a lot of success with. So I, I'd like to thank BT for coming on board. And um, thank you for the opportunity of speaking today. Thanks very much, Ed. Pete? Yeah, no, Nick, I'd echo um, uh, what, what I'd said. And um, in terms of getting the help that we outlined from BT, um, the website to go to is bt.com forward slash small business support. That's all one word, small business support. And a whole range of, of help available to small business owners there. And, and just to build on what I'd said, I think you can take some very basic steps as a small business owner. You know, you don't have to put a huge amount of time in this to get great results. So please, please look at the free resources, particularly around digital skills. And I particularly encourage people to look at the Digital Boost platform to get some mentoring help as well. Thanks very much. That's excellent. And um, we will share the links uh, that you've just mentioned on Twitter at BT Cymru Wales this afternoon. Um, and we'll also post on there a link to the Smart Rural report that you can read in um, Welsh as well as English. And so all that reminds left, is left for me to do today is to remind you that there is another BT session as part of the festival. Um, at the same time tomorrow, we will be exploring the potential for 5G, um, in particular with regard to driving innovation in our public services. And there's quite a lot of work that's going on there that's relevant to rural communities across Wales as well. So thanks for joining us today. Enjoy the rest of Emerging Technology 2021. Uh, Thank you for joining the Emerging Tech Fest. Join us again on our virtual live sessions or watch us on playback anytime, anywhere.